my word is peace. Peace, peace has got to be peace. And I went, no, I can't have peace without truth. We finally made it to the other side. In this, the sixth final episode, there is this false attempt at giving us this message that they have come full circle. They open up the episode with even more video diaries because we're all walking around making video diaries of every moment of our lives, aren't we? It's 6 a.m. on the 14th of March and we are on the Freedom Flight. <laughs> Would you look at that? The Eco Warriors are on a private jet dispatched to them, I think, by their savior, who also happened to be a stranger, Tyler Perry. Now I know nothing about Tyler Perry, but I think I got everything I needed to know from his few segments in this uh, reality show. And uh, let me just say, I can see why him and Meghan and Harry are friends. So his purpose was to provide the Sussexes who just wanted to be like the rest of us normals with a huge mansion in LA, security, their own private bushland from the looks of it, where while the rest of us were locked up in our homes in COVID, they would go frolicking around with their dogs. And Megan boasts about this. It's secret and so at least during COVID-19 we can take the dogs for a walk and have a little slice of normal life. His other purpose of course was to trash the royal family. The most that I knew about the royal family was around Princess Diana's death. She was afraid of them destroying her. Except Meghan, unlike Princess Diana, was never hounded. Whether Princess Diana arranged all the media encounters, which I don't think she did, there is actual footage and evidence of her being hounded and of her being upset, more importantly. When it comes to Meghan, all we get is... I'm talking even as far back as Toronto. All we have is her telling H what was happening through the phone. I mean, the Toronto police <laughs> pulled an Archbishop of Canterbury and came out and said all of her accusations against them being that they didn't give her the protection she deserved are false. They responded to all of her calls and everything she described in that first episode may not have even been the truth. So the last thing we need is this Tyler Perry character who thinks he's too good for the royal family. He is so good, in fact, that he refused to attend Lily's christening in the UK if that's what was expected of him. And like Harry, he too seems to have taken on this mantle of life coach where he not only validates all of Meghan's paranoia, but goes as far as to say that she and Harry were abused. This woman was abused and so was he. As someone who has been through a very harrowing experience with being targeted and, like I said in the last episode, stalked, harassed, physically assaulted, these people clearly have never experienced actual abuse. It's funny, they can dish it. Let's not forget, William and Catherine actually received death threats after that Oprah interview, but they can't take it. Now we know that Tyler Perry helped them escape on their freedom flight to LA. And apparently they managed to stay incognito for six weeks, just as long as they were able to do so in Canada. Coincidence? Let's keep going. There is this dramatic scene about how they were exposed in LA with helicopters circling up top. Now they go through great lengths to tell us the audience that no one, not even the royal family, knew about their location. They all thought they were still in Canada, which begs the question, who leaked the location twice and within six weeks in both instances? And then why do you further publicize this leak via Gail King? This really reminds me of when Meghan and Harry first started dating and for five or six months, no one knew, no one cared. And then suddenly Jason Knopf tells them right before Halloween of 2016 that, oh, it's gonna get leaked, you've been outed. And then not a week later, a week later, Harry already has to release a statement condemning the treatment of his girlfriend by the press. Now, Tom Bauer has already told us in his book, Revenge, that this was all Megan's plan. She was dismayed that no one paid attention to the relationship. She wanted people to know. She actively baited the media with those incessant photos of her bracelet that she shared with Harry. When all of that didn't work, she pushed for the statement. 
I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm beginning to see a pattern of behavior here. And it's of no surprise at this point to any of us that Harry just keeps falling for absolutely everything, including this coincidence. Once we announced it, I got two messages from two completely different people who sent me the front page of Valentine's Day 1984 of my mother announcing that she was pregnant with me. I was shocked. We had no idea. It was just a coincidence. Oh, <laughs> poor Harry. You can't buy intelligence. Well, Oprah had originally reached out through the communications director when we were at Kensington Palace. Now this is of course in connection with the interview. Why would Oprah reach out to you when you were still within the institution? The Duchess is saddened by this latest attack on her character. They repeat the notion that the palace purposely timed the release of the bullying allegations right before the Oprah interview. Now, let's assume this is true. So what? So you're the only ones who are allowed to make the first move? But when people want to come out with the truth, they're not allowed to. Speaking of lies and truth, it seems that Harry and Meghan are operating off the same manual as Amber Heard because she notoriously brought up this truth to power in the defamation trial brought by Johnny Depp against her. And next thing you know... Everything that's happened to us was always going to happen to us because if you speak truth to power, that's how they respond. <sighs> I swear if they're at the coronation. Now we finally get to find out what the true purpose of that Oprah interview was. Filling in the blanks. And in a true display of defiance, they re-aired the racist allegations from the Oprah interview. Speaking of racism, there is a segment where they describe how the children look and Lily is described as... Very Spencer-like. She's got the same blue eyes. Blue, blue, blue eyes. Golden, reddish hair. And you told us in the cut interview that people in the UK were calling your children the n-word <laughs> the thing about liars is they can't keep track of their lies or maybe they're just so far gone that even they don't realize the contradictions in the aftermath of course they only focus on the positives like beyonce's text for example beyonce just texted she just wants me to feel safe and protected she admires and respects my bravery and vulnerability and she thinks i was selected to break generational curses that need to be healed mm. how convenient that megan happened to receive that text while the netflix crew was there filming i think anyone who watched megan read that out loud and the way she read it and then mm. if you still think she's this innocent lovely humble down-to-earth gal next door who just wanted a quiet normal life with her handsome prince <sighs> and they can read out that text from beyonce but the text from william oh no wow believe it or not there was a segment about Prince Philip. Now, I understand Harry was his grandchild, and I don't doubt that Harry, at least in the past, loved his grandfather. Maybe he still does on some level deep down inside. Although, it's kind of hard to resonate that with arranging a sit-down interview when you already knew that your 99, almost 100-year-old grandfather was on his way out. Harry's friend says that Harry's respect for his grandfather was monumentally deep. The guy didn't even go to his grandfather's memorial. He deprived him knowing that he was 99 years old when they left of a chance to spend the last few months of his life with not only his grandson, but his great grandson. He barely knew him. He was born, they caught a glimpse of him and they were gone. And despite what Harry and his best friend want you to believe, Prince Philip didn't even want to see Harry at the Sandringham summit. That's how disappointed and angry he was with him. And Harry has the audacity to say that he died quietly. He went peacefully. He went happily. I hope he did for Prince Philip's own sake. Now with Meghan and Harry, there always has to be an enemy. It's like what Jason Knopf said about Meghan during her time at the palace. She always has to have someone in her sights, someone to be angry at. Now, it's ironic that Jason Knopf said that because that someone happened to be him. Those of you who know about the lawsuit, which I briefly covered in the last video, episode five, and at length, really, on this channel a year ago at this point, you'll know that Jason involved himself eventually in the appeal 
of this case after Megan won her summary judgment. Now, when I say involved himself, I mean he submitted the truth. He submitted evidence that outed Meghan and Harry as the liars that they are. Where Meghan said that the letter was never meant to be leaked and it was a private letter from daughter to father, Jason presented texts stating otherwise. Where Meghan claimed that she had no involvement with finding freedom and writing the book, Jason also happened to present evidence proving otherwise. So Jason is a truth teller. Meghan Markle's greatest enemy. And of course, they couldn't pass up the chance to insult William and Catherine because her lawyer, Jenny Afia, says that Jason Knopf involved himself under the direction of Prince William. So they're making it out like Prince William had Meghan in his sights and he unleashed Jason on them to bring them down. It's your brother. I'm not gonna say anything about your brother, but it's so obvious. Remember that pattern of behavior where I said they can do whatever they want and spout lies in front of millions, but as soon as people want to come out with the truth, it's all at war? I don't know what to tell you, Megan. The truth always finds a way. Maybe if you showed it a little respect and gave it a little curtsy, it wouldn't keep coming out and biting you in the ass. Oh, and they conveniently, completely skipped over the fact that Megan had to apologize to the court for misleading them. And much like the recollections may vary comment from the queen, may she rest in peace. The court's response to that, by the way, was that Meghan at best, at best, had an unfortunate lapse of memory. The Brits really have a way of being very diplomatic. I love it. But as we know, she did win. And that scene that they played time and time again in the trailer, where they tried to convince us all that she was crying. It's funny, a lot of us picked out that she was laughing. And she was. They did this a lot, by the way. They picked strategic scenes in the trailer, which actually ended up being so benign. Oh my God, it's, how, is it, how is it 10 to 12? Oh. So opposite to the dramatic chaos that they were meant to convey. It's just so deceptive. It's so dirty. And those of you who are upset at her winning the appeal, save yourself the frustration because but for that appeal, all of the evidence presented against her would never have come to light, at least not publicly. So the way I see it, it was a win. She didn't really even get monetary compensation for it under the guise of it's not about the money. If you're currently munching on a snack or eating, I would advise that you stop before I play this next clip for you. My word is peace, peace, peace has gotta be peace. All I want is peace and I went, no, I can't have peace without truth. Honestly, when I was watching it, I was speechless. But now I'm gonna resort to something I always say on my channel, which is someone needs to hand Megan a dictionary and show her, point out to her, where chaos and destruction are listed because I think she's getting her wires crossed again. They play a clip of her reconnecting with Ashley, her niece. Now, to a regular bystander who knows nothing about Megan, one would think that this is actually a promotion of peace and truth. When the way I see it, and I could be wrong, but I mean, again, her actions have completely marred my opinion of her. It's just another way to stick the knife even further and deeper into her sister, Samantha. Because Ashley is Samantha's daughter and Samantha, thanks to Megan, has been deprived of a relationship with her biological daughter. Because Megan basically blamed Samantha for Ashley's lack of an invitation to Megan's wedding. And Ashley fell for it, which is really a head scratcher because what about the rest of the family? Was that Samantha Markle's fault too? All I can say is good luck, Ashley. You're gonna need it. Now, Harry says something that is completely believable for a change. I miss the, the weird family gatherings. I miss the UK, I miss my friends. I lost a few friends in this process as well. And it's sad because he really didn't have to be deprived of all three. But I guess that's the price you pay when you align yourself with peace and truth. But then he quickly catches himself <laughs> and he reverts back to normal. This was the most obvious place to come. You know, it's one of the places where I think my mum was probably going to end up living, potentially. The land of the paparazzi is home to a man who said that he gets PTSD, essentially, from the sound of cameras clicking. And then, because that wasn't preposterous enough, Diana would have wanted to live there. After that entire six-episode spiel about how she was relentlessly and mercilessly hounded and then eventually killed by the media, that's Harry's belief, right? That's his story. And yet she still would have wanted to live in LA. I'm not. 
Insert another loyal lackey to say that Barry was always looking for a simpler life. You know, a husband and a wife with two kids and two dogs. Yeah, with all the private jets and the 16 bathroom mansions, the pseudo royal tours, the suing an entire government for security. Pretty simple, I would say. Yeah. But the message is they've made it to the other side. So after all that propaganda, six hours worth of it, they circle back to the beginning, their love story. They could have ended things on a high note, and I really thought they were going to. But remember, truth and peace. Peace-loving Meghan and Harry just had to end it with yet another attack against Jason Knopf and of course, the arch nemesis, the prince and princess of Wales. So after wasting countless hours of my life and exposing myself to the incredibly serious side effects of this Monty Shit Show disease, what did this docuseries actually achieve? It served to highlight two conniving middle-aged children who only seemed to bitch and moan about the incredibly beautiful and privileged life they have. I mean, the scenery of them with their children, with all those amenities, all that space, all that time, which they can spend at home because they don't have to have traditional jobs like the rest of us. They could be very happy if only they would just leave the royal family alone, move on, put your money where your mouth is, and do as you said in the engagement interview, which is, I made the choice to not read anything, positive or negative, it just didn't make sense. And all they can do is fester with hatred and jealousy and anger and bitterness. It's an actual cursed existence. And something Harry said in the engagement interview really reveals how disingenuous and how deceptive they have both been. The fact that she'll be really unbelievably good at the job part of it as well is obviously a huge, huge relief to me because she'll be able to deal with, with everything else that comes with it. If all they wanted was a quiet life together, why would it be a boon for her to be this actress from the entertainment industry with experience in dealing with the media? And why did they refuse the Queen's offer to give them a private life, to allow them to marry and be private citizens? I mean, these are rhetorical questions at this point. We know what they actually wanted, or at least what Meghan actually wanted, because Harry seemed genuine during that interview. But somehow, somewhere, his mind got poisoned. And now they're asking for an apology, apparently. I thought it was a joke. But now there are reports that they are seeking an audience, a summit with the royal family. Well, I got something to share with you, Meghan. Thomas Markle would like an audience with his family and his grandchildren that he's never met, by the way. Just saying. Peace out.